Hi. 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 I'm Diane Shapiro, and you are? I'm Mike Hoff. Nice to meet you, and Mike, who are you with? Um, I'm with Southern Pay Debate. Okay, in one sec, first we have to read our mission. The mission of Abate of Illinois is to preserve the universal right to a safe, unrestricted motorcycling environment and to propose and advocate actions that can be taken by elected and appointed officials to protect and conserve the natural resources of the state of Illinois and ensure through professional management that sustainable use, recreational opportunities, and enjoyment of these resources is available for this and future generations. Absolutely. And to fill this, fulfill this mission, we will... Uh, safeguard the rights of all motorcyclists. We will endorse safety programs and ed education programs, promote unity through involvement, advocate political awareness and activism, and promote motorcycling enjoyment. Yay! And if you can't enjoy your motorcycle when you're on it, then park it. Well, I'm a passenger, not a rider, and I'm happy to ride B with anybody. Okay. Hint, hint. Spring's coming up. Yeah, not nearly soon enough. But I'm thinking that there's still some crazy road warriors that are going to be out there even now. Oh, I know a half a dozen people that so long as there's no salt on the road, they're out there riding. And it gets to the point where, yeah, too cold is too cold. You get so bundled up you can't feel anything. What's the point? But that's just me. It's just you and every other normal human being. Yeah. There you go. Toys for Tots, what, last week and week, weekend before, yeah. they had what, four or five inches of snow on the ground, and God bless them, but not me. I was at the at Lane Tech High School with a number of the people at, from at the end point. Toys for Tots, okay. yeah. And it, there was such great spirit, wonderful camaraderie, mm -hmm. but we did, the, the the riders started coming in just as the worst of the snow on the south side was falling. Right. So, so yeah. I saw a lot of pictures on, on, on social media with the bikes just covered with snow. Not mine. Sorry. Mine are clean and polished and put in the garage. So. <laughs> like every normal human being. Waiting on a spring oil change. But, you know, it was it was nice to see the spirit, the camaraderie, Oh, the absolutely. Friendship. I mean, Toys for Tots, and they do so much for, for, for so many people. Um... It, it's worth very worthwhile event, so I need a lot of people out there. Well, now it's winter, and we're looking for indoor events. Yeah, I got one coming up. Let's talk about it. Okay. Um, Southern DuPage does an event called the Exposure Tour. And for those of you that, that don't know, for years and years, I think 15 years now, um, Southern DuPage Beta has done a topless tour. Celebrate our right to, to ride without a helmet in Illinois. And a few years ago, I was down in Daytona for Bike Week, and I'm sitting in a bar listening to a band, and the band was just horrendous. It's like they took five people out of the audience. Here, you play the guitar, you play the drums. So I'm, I'm giving the bartender some grief about it, mm -hmm. and jokingly, and it turns out he's the owner of the bar. And it's like, you know how hard it is for me to find a decent band and blah, blah, blah. So Exposure Tour kind of came to mind as a play off, off the top of tour. Um, and what we do is we bring in 10 bands on two stages, and each band has 30 minutes to perform on stage. Um, we bring in a host of VIPs, um, event coordinators, bar owners. Um, I've got commitments for some Harley people to be there. Anybody that, that hires bands, here's, here's your chance to see 10 bands on a Sunday afternoon. Let's give them the date again. It's February 19th at Q Bar oh. in, um, in Glendale Heights. And it's from noon to 6 p.m. Oh. Oh, okay. I'm trying to make it visible. There we go. Here. Right? That should be like there. There it is. Yeah, Perfect. That's what I'm okay. trying February for. February 19th, 2017. That's just a few weeks away. Noon to 6. And it's at Q Bar. It's, it's the old Shark City um, right at Army Trail and Bloomingdale Road in Glendale Heights. Huge facility. We'll have two stages set up. Ten bands. No waiting. Um, Dale Irvin, who is a professional comedian, who is a member of Southern New Page Debate, is going to come and do a little halftime thing for us. So it's been a good time. This is our third, the third one that we've done, um, and it works. I mean, at each band's, you know, all the bands, they give me 30 minutes. And the only thing I ask them is give me the best 30 minutes your band has. And it rocks. And the audience, and it, it, it's a fundraiser for Southern New Page Debate for our education fund and along those lines, and the audience reaps the benefits. The bands get work, the VIPs meet the bands, and it's a win-win for everybody. And everybody is there. They're having a good time, mm -hmm. enjoying the food, Absolutely. the friendship, the and all the things that come along and with it. And actually, Q-Bar is going to do a, uh, 
a, a burger for us. We're going to call it the topless burger. With, like a burger with no top on it, but no top on. So to tie in with the topless tour. Well, that should be wonderful. Yes. There's a lot of events coming up now. Just so you guys know, it's just me and Mike tonight, and we're not having uh, the call-in that I'm aware of. Pat is arranging our abate chili party right now okay. at the Moose in River Grove. River Grove. Yeah. Franklin Park. I get Dinner. it all mixed up. Dinner. And so good stuff. Always asked, always good chili. Always good chili. Oh good good times. Oh good absolutely. People. Yes. And that's what's really nice about it. And we're always accepting raffles and things like that. Mm-hmm. But it's always, it's always, always a good time for anybody that hasn't been to the chili party. Bring a friend. It's bring always... Bring two friends. Bring three. You know what? Go for four. Why not? Make it an even... Like, make it even. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Well, no, but if you bring four friends, that's five people. So you need to bring five friends so there's six. Keep it even. I, my OCD is kicking in. Sorry. <laughs> I can't count the time without <laughs> taking off my boots. But let me add one thing about this. Sure. If you are in a band... If you you know somebody in a band, we have five bands confirmed right now for the exposure tour. I need five more. Um, if you're a band, send me a music link via whatever system you use to exposure tour at yahoo.com. Um, there are four of us selecting the bands. We have, like I said, we have five bands now. I still need a country band, one metal band. I would love to have another blues band. Um, and another rock band. I mean, we try and get a little bit of everything because no bar hires just one particular. They all hire an assortment. Um, so that's what we're looking for. Exposure to at yahoo.com. Um, or if you have any questions, email me there too. Well, I'll mention that to Pat when I talk to him later because tomorrow night is our abate meeting. Mm -hmm. And I may not be able to be there because I've, this, this is the month for everything happening all at once. Yes. And meeting is usually on the third Wednesday, which would have been the 21st. Right. Would have put it so close to Christmas that they moved it back a week. Okay. Well, yeah, Southern Page had theirs last night, and usually we're the, 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 we're the fourth Monday of the month. So we moved it back and did our Christmas party last night to avoid the Christmas rush and everything else. So it worked out good. So it crunches everything else. But, yeah, this is, you know, this is a month for company parties and everything else, so... You know, I mean, and, and this month is crazy. It's like summertime now. And that's why it's so important to have the off-season events, your chili cook-off, the exposure tour. I mean, there's a lot of events coming up over the winter, which is great, because every weekend now during writing season is booked. You've got a choice of, of five, six, seven, ten events in a weekend. Um, we need to stay together on, uh, during the off-season. We're all friends. We all know everybody. May as well just come together for another good time on a weekend. Absolutely. Indoors, and, we're warm. And with the cold weather, it's very dispiriting. It is. This weather, it just, I mean, I'm, I'm inside now for, what, 15 minutes? Mm hmm And I'm still like a, like a little iceberg. <laughs> yeah, it was a little chilly. Uh, I never adjust to this weather. Maybe I, it's time for all of us to mosey on down to warmer climes. Key what West. Think? Sounds like a good time right about Key now. Key West. Dallas, Fort Worth, mm -hmm. the suburbs of Phoenix, the suburbs of Santa Fe. There are places where it doesn't go below zero. Really? I know. Not around here. Around here? No. No. Uh, around here, it's like colder than a witch's you know what. <laughs> and this is and it's not even it's not even winter on the calendar yet. No, it's not. You had uh, another week and a half of this and what? December 21st is, is first day of winter? Yeah, the, the, the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're just barely getting our feet wet, and we've already had, what, over a foot, foot and a half of snow between the, the three that we've had? So, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, so how's that global warming going for you? Yeah, really. It's <laughs> yeah. the same nonsense as the global cooling hoax of the 70s. Yes. Look to the sun as the best predictor of weather. Man does not control the weather. Sorry, folks. So we it, just it, have it, to wait, deal with it. Is that a conspiracy? <sighs> well, there goes my theory. <laughs> There's not enough medication in the world. Okay. So anyways, what, uh, what is your position? I, I, I am former president, former vice president of Southern DuPage Debate, um, and now I am strictly the exposure to a coordinator. 
as you president? Know. Don Peterson is president, mm -hmm. um, Roger Treen is vice president, and other people have other positions. And actually, this was election month, and, and so everybody was up for re-election, and I think all but one we ran, so still got a full house. Are you guys planning on attending the Abate State Seminar in Springfield They will have January? people down there. I, I won't be down there because I'll be running off somewhere else. So. Okay, good. It's, this is another thing, too, about the seminar in January. It gives people an opportunity from all over the state to meet one another. I'm the director of Save Keen Ed in Chicago, mm -hmm. and I've got two schools set, just as an FYI. This Friday, I've got a school set, uh, the uh, Little Village High School, okay. if anybody's interested in volunteering. That will be Friday the 16th. And then Monday the 19th, I've got Bronzeville Academy set. That's on the south side of Chicago. Not terribly far south, like 47th Street. But Little Village is in the Pilsen neighborhood. Okay. And this is what we try and do. It's It's been kind of quiet during this year. People talk about, yeah, we'll have you out, but then it, it doesn't happen because of school funding, because of exactly. days off of school, or you know whatever yeah, the reasons and, are. And the driver's ed program is trying to cram more and more in in shorter amount of time. And oh yeah, it, it, it's tough. It is tough, and be, because right now we're not obvious on the road, there's not a lot of bikes on the road, so I, why should they bother having us in there now? Whereas, you know, during the spring classes and everything, when there's bikes hitting the road, you know, the kids need to be made aware that, that we're out here and how to share the road with us. Absolutely, but it's not just sharing the road with motorcycles, because there's, nowadays, it's not just the motorcycles you have to look out for. You've got to look out for the red light cameras. Mm -hmm. You've got to look out for the speed cameras. You've got to look out for so many different things that, well, people of our age didn't really even think about or worry about. Parking tickets and how that can affect your driver's mm -hmm. license. Uh, DUI and how that can affect your driver's license. And a lot of these kids, because they've been enabled so much, the system and their parents have overprotected them. This is and this is the millennial generation. This is a problem right here with the kids on the phone in the car. Oh, on the Distracted phone. Distracted driver and with the technology in cars now, you know, overlooking the GPS on the dashboard and yeah. But not even knowing, and this is what I try to do, even with the what the instructors do when I when I go in. I know you're not director of safety and ed. I always ask the instructor. Is there a section you're working on right now, like distracted driving? Mm -hmm. And talk about the something like, um, oh, I don't know, Anita Zafke and how she got killed mm -hmm. by that Laura Hunt who was polishing her nails yes. while driving. I remember that. What arrogance. How do you do anything other than drive? And to even remind kids that you know, it's all well and good to know how to use your GPS and all the, the thingamajiggies that are in the car. But what if you have to come, what if you get hit by a sudden rainstorm? Where are your windshield wipers? Yes. Uh, what? Where are the pouches of the car that you actually need? Yeah, where are your headlights at? And I always advise, and this is something that I, I always drive with my headlights on, you know, like they do with, like, motorcycles mm -hmm. do. But I learned how to do that when I was driving in the mountains, well, in the Carolinas. Okay. I was producing shrine circuses. I did that for 18 years. Oh, okay. And I learned from the truckers that it's a really good idea to keep your headlights on all the time, day and night, because you don't know when you're going to come to a hill, you don't know when you're going to come exactly. to a place where you want to be sure that somebody sees you. And people don't even think about it, that at dawn and dusk, or even just the other day, when it was gray and overcast. Yes. You can't see. Everything is just white. And there is something called um, motion-induced blindness, which pilots will often get. Okay where you're looking straight ahead and you actually don't see any longer in front of you. It's, it's called motion-induced blindness. And that's why you want to keep your eyes moving, especially in that kind of weather, so well, you don't get too fixated on the road. Yeah, I drive a truck for a living, so I've been taught from day one, check the mirror, look at the window, look at the gauges, check the mirror, check the mirror, so your head is constantly moving to change your field of vision and to change your focus um, instead of focusing, you know, half a mile down the road, now you're looking at that mirror and then that mirror, so your head is always moving, rotating around. Right, and that, to, that prevents the yes. motion-induced blindness. Because really, when you do sit and stare 
for a long period of time. Don't try it, because, you know, I believe in Mary Worth and the mirror. But, <laughs> you know, what can I tell you? You know, there were always this, like, 14-year-olds in our head. But these kids, and they're, they're kids, and a lot of them, they're really immature. Really immature. Yeah. And they've been encouraged to be more and more immature. And it's like, with big government taking over everything, it's like, even if their teacher says something that they don't, like, go, go complain about the teacher. The system, this, this is a problem. This is why, why I, I, I taught for a number of years at the college level. Okay. Part of the reason why I stopped teaching is because it's like, excuse me, the teacher is supposed to have the control, not the students. Yes, I agree with that. And, like, even these enabled bicyclists, they don't even realize that there are bicycle rules of the road. And I'm sure that as a trucker, you see that yourself. Zoom it out. Back it up. Okay, i got to back it up. We are so professional doing this. There yeah. we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, tight, tighten it up just a little bit. A little bit. Perfect. I'll rearrange that. Just yeah. Bit. Right there. The, there really are bicycle rolls of the road, which a lot of bicyclists don't get. Well, don't they're understand. supposed to. They're supposed to abide by stop signs and stop lights like the rest of us. And I see so many, especially when I'm in the city. It's not so bit bad out in suburbia where I go all the time, but in the city you see it just blasting through. Also, well, the kids need to realize that hello, there are rules of the road for every vehicle. There's motorcycle rules of the road, motorcycle operation manual. The, C the CDL manual for a truck is about yay thick. Oh, and another thing that we have to cover in the class, too, is about the fact that in order to get your motorcycle license, mm -hmm. you've got to get your D before you can get your M class. Yes. But you also have to have your M before you can get your CDL. And it's so easy to lose a CDL, the restrictions. Oh, sure it is. They put on you guys, even if you're, sus I, I would hesitate to be a truck driver these days. I've been doing it 30 years and I hesitate to, to do it every day, so. It used to be fun, first million miles were fun after that, now it's kind of boring, so. Now it's just a job. And I used to, when we would do the, the, the produce the shrine circuses around the country, Often I would I would fly out, but a lot of the time for some of the, the smaller dates, mm -hmm. like uh, like in Phoenix, I flew in I flew into Phoenix and then I met them all in Sholo at the at the reservation. Okay. And we were on the trucks, but that was another thing you always want to drive with your lights. And we had straight job. We didn't have mm -hmm. semis. We just okay. had straight jobs. We didn't have any cab overs or right. anything like that. But uh, we did carry a lot of equipment, a lot of heavy weight. So they always wanted to make sure that people were paying attention. But these kids, and I hate to, I even hate to use the word kids, because they're almost adults chronologically. Yes, chronologically, but emotionally, uh, yeah, not, it's not happening. The skull does not, mm -hmm. your skull does not seal until you're 25 years of age. Oh, so until that time it's still taking everything in? Oh. They're they're very they're. That like, it seems like my kids attitude. Are, okay. It seems like kids are more immature these days. Again, government wants to make sure of it. Oh, and I we, agree with you. We, we've got to impress on these kids. 14, 15, and 16 year olds, if they're arrested, can be charged as adults. If you're involved, God forbid, in a crash where somebody gets killed or injured, or you're under the influence of some kind of, not just illegal yeah. controlled substance, cough syrup. It's oh, prescribed sure. for you. With, with my CDL, when I drove over the road, I could not have cough syrup in the truck that had any alcohol. So, like a NyQuil, nothing. I had to have anything that was non-alcoholic non cough medicine for anything like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the restrictions are so tight. And, yeah, you got now with medical marijuana cards, um, you know, any, any prescription drug, yeah, I mean, when it says on, on the little label, should not operate heavy equipment or drive, Absolutely. take it to heart. You're not supposed to do that, because even if you've taken them before, it still does affect you. NyQuil, Benadryl, most, most allergy medications. Robitussin? Yeah, but um, most allergy medications are mm -hmm. barbiturates. Yes. And even if they're over the counter, they still be can, can be considered, you just have to know how a medication is going to affect you. Yes, what yeah. will affect you may not affect me. I can't take Benadryl. Puts me out oh, yeah, of yeah, yeah, just like that. Yeah. 
So, but this is all the stuff that we have to go over with, with the kids because they need to think about the consequences of their actions. And they don't. They don't. They get in the car and they go and whatever happens, happens. And they don't think, you know, I mean, when we were 15, 16 years old, did we think about two weeks from today? No, we thought about today, we thought about tomorrow. You know, and so that hasn't changed. In fact, I, I think it's gotten worse is now they don't think five minutes in advance. Well, I can remember when we were kids, it was like, hey, tough it out, you'll be okay. And these kids today, they're like little little snowflakes. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't coin the phrase snowflakes, but my gosh. We were thinking in terms of, like, some of us went to college, and some of us were going to go to trade school, and some of us were going to go in the military, and... Everybody was, was choosing a different path, and it seems like nowadays nobody even talks about things like that. They talk about, oh, we're all going to go to college. We're all going... Maybe some of you shouldn't be going to college. Maybe you should go to trade school or job corps or something like that and get Nothing a Nothing wrong with working with your hands. Absolutely not. Not everybody is a lawyer or a doctor. You're always going to need someone to fix your car, mm -hmm. fix your truck. Build your house. Your motorcycle. Build your house. Yeah. So what we try and do is talk about a variety of things, but especially in, in the classroom when they're working on certain things, whether it's DUI, distracted driving. Mm -hmm. um, some of these, many of these kids have never even been behind the wheel of a car. Talk about how your perspective changes. Oh, sure. From the passenger seat to the driver's seat and why the mirrors have to be adjusted a certain way. And if they have trouble adjusting their mirrors, there's a tutorial on YouTube showing you how to do it. Because it, it does, it is, it does take a while it does. before you can adjust your mirrors, and sometimes that little tutorial is very helpful. And, and, and when I was teaching my kids, they had an issue with lane positioning. You're going down the road. Well, how far from the line or the curb are you? <laughs> oh, my dad used to scream and at me when he was my, teaching me. My daughter. I'm too far to, to the right. To this day, is a curb runner, and you know it's a. It, so there's many things that these kids need to be taught, and drivers that they're cutting sure. back. <laughs> Excuse me, and, and now they don't get the behind the wheel time that they used to in driver's ed. Now it's up to the parents or whoever to take them out driving and got to log all the miles and whether it's, you know, city driving. And, so, I mean, yeah, and even talking with the kids about the responsibility behind the wheel of a car. You are driving, you're driving a vehicle, but... And then we talk about things like, because I, I was an adult probation officer for 25 years, and okay. I did do actual investigations on, on uh, vehicular homicide that, you know, even, I didn't mean to run that person over. They walked right in front of me. Those things happen. Of course, but how that can wreck your future. Oh, sure. And even things like, if a policeman pulls you over, what should you do? So we go over things like that, like keep your hands on the wheel, don't do anything unless the officer tells you. Yes. And always be polite and respectful. Because I'm sorry, you know, you hear about these kids and so on, mouthing off to a police officer, mouthing off to a teacher. And they do get away with mouthing off to their teachers. I was talking to a state trooper one time and I said, well, how you know, how soon do you know whether the person you pulled over is gonna get a warning ticket or our ticket? About 15 seconds. The first words out of their mouth determine whether they're going to get a ticket, arrested, or just a warning. Say, you know what, be careful. See you later. Exactly. So attitude is everything. Attitude and manners. That's something <clears throat> that I was saying. Was it uh, a book that uh, some guy has out that's talking about basically good manners, please and thank you? I mean, those are the two magic words, I think, that are so important. Please, thank you. And even when I'm addressing a class, I realize I'm an invitee into the classroom. Yes. I, I, I thank you for having me on tonight. I was invited. Well, actually, I barred my way in, but... Um, <laughs> no, nobody <laughs> nobody pushes Pat Jones around, okay? No, that's true. That's true. Thank you, Pat, for having for, for allowing me to come in this evening. Well, you know, there's just it's just wonderful that we have such a great network of motorcyclists around the state, the network with other people around the country. Yes. And there's some bikers going to be going out to uh, to the inauguration in Washington, D.C. Oh, that would be cool. And guys that we know are Patriot Guard riders and guys that we know. They're just involved in so many different wonderful and altruistic activities. And they volunteer I, I, I their time. I just heard that Garth Brooks is playing the inauguration. I'm a happy camper. I like Garth. So, so these are all the things <clears throat> that 
that we take into consideration that some of us, like me, I don't ride. Like I said, I'm, I'm a happy passenger. But my goal in doing what I'm doing is to save lives. I know too many people personally. Even before I became involved with a bait, I know four people. Three were killed, and one was permanently injured in motorcycle crashes. And all four of these people were not responsible, just in the case, like in the case of Anita Zafke. Right. She was sitting at a stoplight, waiting for the light to turn green, and she got rear-ended. Wrong place at the wrong time. <clears throat> Worse than being rear-ended, the woman driving that vehicle was not only distracted, she was polishing her nails. Yep. If you're doing anything in your car other than driving, paying attention to what you need to pay attention to, that's distracted driving. It takes practice. And I can remember getting, learning how to drive and saying, oh my God, will I ever be able to get my hands off the wheel? But that's, that's a good thing. Because as long as you're thinking about it, you're concentrating on it, you're paying attention. So you're not one of these women that were doing your makeup on the way to work and no. okay, and, and coffee and a cigarette and that's My all. father would have <coughs> killed me. I see those women oh every single day on the job. The warnings I got from my, my, my late father and rest his soul, he did his best, you know. We we had we were so much alike, we were always like this. But it was always like, drive your car, you're responsible. And I'll tell you very honestly, back in the day, you know, DUIs were no big deal. But yeah. we all knew among ourselves that one person would always be that designated driver. Yes. And Absolutely. as often as not, I was the designated driver. And I knew that I was going to be stone cold sober and make sure that my friends got home safely. Because these are the things that we were, that, that were so important to us. And it just seems that nowadays they're, the I don't know, it just it's a, it's a different it's a different time, and I look back with a little bit of nostalgia. We are a kinder, gentler society now, which sucks. But you know, let's, let's just you know man up or buck up and, and take responsibility for our actions. And you know, and we were expected to mature a lot more quickly back then. Oh yes, without a doubt, without we a doubt, we were. Working jobs during the summer mm -hmm. and so on. I just saw a thing on Facebook the other day. Um, remember when we were growing up? We get a big snow like this. All your friends would be out shoveling driveways for the people down the street. You want to throw them a couple of bucks. And what do you see now? Maybe the kids got a snowblower, but you don't see the groups of kids going from house to house. Well, let's let's helping. work on let's work on changing the world around us because we can be agents of change. We can. Now I've never been married. I have no children, but I do try, like even in the classroom, to try and that's like when I was teaching classes. I these were like my kids. And each gener each classroom of children right. was was another generation that I was trying to, to guide on a right path, give them information, to s make them curious, to search for information. Because you know what, life is an ongoing learning process, and I'm still learning stuff now. Every day, every single day. I am actually Facebook friends with my seventh grade teacher. And that was a long, long time ago. And I sent her a message one day. I said, you know what? You, you never realize at the time the impact you have on somebody's life. Absolutely. And this woman turned me around. I mean, I was still a little butthead, but uh, not as bad as I used to be, but thanks, thanks to her. So. Okay. Well, I'm going to say we have to wrap it up here. Okay. If anybody wants to volunteer to help me at either school on Friday or Monday, let me know. Come to the Exposure 3 on February 19th. We'll have information about it tomorrow yeah. night at the meeting. And we're going to wish everybody happy holidays. Hanukkah and Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Are the same, they, they start the same night. So okay. when you light your first night of Hanukkah, it's Christmas Eve. So yay! Happy holidays and happy new year to everyone. We'll look forward to seeing you at our chili party on February 11th. Whatever it is, that second Saturday in February. We're having a great time here. Right. Wait, let me check my calendar real quick. Let's but, check the anyway, calendar real quick. Again, we gotta go. Thank you for having me on. We'll see you at, at the Chili. Thank okay. You. Good night. Good night.